This is a video on olive oil lamps. This, These are two examples of olive oil lamps that I just made. Um, I got the idea from a company called Layman's. They make olive oil lamps. And you can also buy the uh, interior pieces. But um, I thought I would be able to make them myself, so I did. And I will show you how to make them. This is what they look like. They're kind of still hot. But I'll show you, and they're going to be oily. So there's a little handle here that I made so I can reach in and get them. And then there's uh, the wick. There's a coil of this wire, and then there's a wick. And the wick is kind of long, and it kind of just coils on the bottom down there. And uh, it's pretty cool how it works. Um, this one, like I said, is, is really uh, relatively flat, as you can see. Um, this one, that takes more oil, is pretty high. You can Okay, so to make an olive oil lamp, you'll need a mason jar, of course. This is the ball variety from Walmart. I got 12 of them for $8, brand new. They are, these are pint jars, um, so they're not too, too big. Certainly bigger and certainly smaller. Um, I think this is a pretty good size. Um, I, if you would get something different, I would probably go wider um, this way, this way, and maybe a little bit shorter just because you don't really need, you'll need less oil that way, but it would burn longer. Um, but like I said, this is just a pint mason jar. You need some wire, which is hard to find because you don't want to use any galvanized steel wire because of the zinc coating on it. And the zinc could, with the fire, could, I'm not saying it will, it could um, cause the zinc to um, be toxic into the air. So I don't know. Just what I read somewhere. So, or, and I also would not recommend using copper wire because it can get all green and funky. And if you need a reference for that, check out the Statue of Liberty. Um, so I found this 12 gauge hanger wire, which is, um, sorry, kind of hard to see there. It's Suspendit brand hanger wire. Uh, I got 100 feet of this. It's for like drop ceilings. Um, it's like I said, 12 gauge hanger wire. It's pretty heavy stuff, but you can still mold it pretty well. It's pliable. It'll hold a shape, sort of. Um, it's perfect for this application. It's not galvanized. Here's the information. We got this at Home Depot today. Uh, 100 feet for $6. So suspend it. The model number is 8850. 12 gauge hanger wire, 100 feet. Um, that's the the uh, hanger wire we got here. So you got your wire, your mason jar. Um, of course you need, you'll need a uh, needle nose pliers with a uh, wire cutter integrated into it. And you'll need some wick. This wick I got at Michael's for like two dollars or something I think it was. Um, it's Yaley candle wicking. It's the extra large size. Um, it's bleached, whatever. You could use any cotton um, uh, wa uh, like twine or anything like that. This one's nice because it's already braided. It was pretty cheap. Four feet of it, the extra large size. Um, I've already made three of the lamps, and I still have I still have probably another two feet left. So you can make a bunch of lamps just with one of these packages. Um, you'll need some olive oil. I got the extra, extra light olive oil, the lightest uh, oil I could find because I wanted the um, the lamps to be really bright and like cheery instead of like really dark and green or whatever. And uh, it was cheap. And actually, I experimented with this. This is some um, essential oil. Um, you, obviously, this is optional. The olive oil doesn't really smell at all. It's pretty much it's smokeless. Pretty much scentless, like it's it's very faint. You don't really smell it at all. Um, so anyway, I put some woodland pine drops. I put about three drops, I think, in um, in the oil in with the lamp, and it, it smells really really good. Okay, so to start your wick holder, you take a piece of wire, um, probably between 
uh, depends on on how high your uh, mason jar is. For these pint ones, I usually put them between like uh, 18 to 24 inches in length. And you start on one end with your needle nose, and you want to make a coil. Um, the coil is going to be what holds your wick. So you're going to make this coil, and the wick's going to come up through the coil. This will be like the end of the coil, and it'll hold the wick like this. So the wick's got to be, or this holder, the diameter of these of the coil has to be pretty, pretty small. Um, but you want to coil the wire around itself, like into a coil, obviously, um, four to six times. The total coil should be about a centimeter long. Um, and I will start this one and keep coiling it around here the best I can and turn the camera back on and I'll show you what it looks like when it's coiled. So I worked on my coil and this is what I came up with at one end. Alright, so you've made your coil, this first coil. Now you have to take the rest of the wire and make a circle. And it's best if this circle fits uh, the the smallest diameter or very close to the diameter of your container. So this one's not too bad and you want to make like a like a ring here and you can give it a little bit of elevation if you want. Um, I wouldn't really recommend it because the higher you make this coil compared to this bottom the more oil you're going to need to add to the jar to keep the uh, lamp lit. So I would keep it pretty low. Um, I keep them almost totally in line, maybe a little bit elevated here. Um, but it's up to you. So quilt like this, then put this at a 90 degree angle and make yourself a big old long handle. And that handle is going to go into your jar so that it can set and then you can decide what you want to do with the handle. Uh, I bend mine down here and cut it off right around. Uh, usually snip it right about here. Uh, you could make one that runs the entire length of the jar. That would be pretty easy to, to uh, bring in and out. Uh, you could put, make it the whole length and keep it inside the jar. I, with this particular jar, I like it ending right out here because you need to be able to lift this out and light the wick and put it back in. So it's up to you, um, but this is the shape that you want to end up with. And once you have this shape and it fits, pretty well in your jar. And remember you want to try to put this as close to you can as the center of your jar. Alright, so once you make your little coil, I leave a gap in the top. Um, the coil kind of just holds this. Um, the goal is to have the coil itself, the diameter of this coil that you made, to hold the rope, but um, with the gauge of wire that I had to use, um, I make it come out of this top piece right here, um, and it works out fine. It looks like it's going out of the side right now, but um, when you actually like light it and stuff, it'll, it'll work totally fine. Um, and if that is the case, you can angle this a little bit if you have to, um, and like I said, it'll work totally fine. No big deal at all um, if you have to angle this up a little bit. Basically, you just need a way that uh, you can keep the wick in there, um, and it will uh, and stand like that. So, if you do it this way, you can have it hold the wick, and you can still adjust it because you'll need to adjust this wick um, as the lamp, as you know, the lamp goes on or whatever. So once you have your wick in your wick holder. Um, usually they say about six centimeters of wick um, should be out. So just uh, I always, I put it in the lamp, and wherever the wick stops at the rim here, I just cut. So I get you just by the way, um, and that's usually enough. And then you just put it all in here. So we completed our wick holder here. Uh, I did have to angle this up um, so that the wick would be totally perpendicular. Um, so it'll sort of sit like this. There's your little extra tag end of wick. 
But anyway, it sits in your jar just like that. So we put it in the jar here. Oops. And it sits in just like that. And remember we had the, added this little handle so that you can lift it in and out like that. Now you want to fill the jar. Let me find a clear spot if you can see. That is in the center of the jar. It doesn't really look like it, but it is. You want to fill the jar to the to right near where the wick comes out of the top. So I'll try to show you here. So that's about pretty good right there. Because you're starting to get it on the coil, which is about the right length that you want. Um, and I always pour some onto the wick just to get the wick uh, wet with the oil. Otherwise you have to wait around and wait for it all to get totally saturated. But if you pour it on the wick in the beginning, uh, then you won't have to worry about it. So you've got it in there. You've got the oil on the wick and uh, everything. And it's, it's about to the bottom of the coil there. So then from there, you're going to readjust the tripod. You're going to pull the, uh, the wick out, pinch the end here to get rid of any excess oil, and of course wipe that off, then like on your hand or whatever. And uh, then you just light it. And it'll take a little bit to light. And it's lit. And you just drop it back in. And, uh, and there's your lamp. And this is what it looks like from the top. Looking in. And this is smoking. So this is a good example. If it's smoking, uh, I find that your wick is probably a little bit too long. So in this case, uh, it's not much long. It wasn't too long because now it's not smoking anymore. Uh, but you can trim it if if it's too long, you know, you can adjust it because there's extra wick and stuff like that. Um, I recommend only canola or only olive oil. Don't use canola oil. Uh, it stinks. It's from what I hear, it smokes and stuff like that. I would stick to just olive oil, um, and you'll have a neat little uh, lamp here. If we could get the lights, I can show you what it looks like as this adjusts. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's actually a lot brighter than this, you can't really tell. All right, and we have the lights back on. Um, if you would like to blow it out, you can just blow it out, of course, and you can add like a couple drops of this, of whatever essential oil you want, into it, of course, when it's not lit and not hot, and just, you know, mix, swirl it around or mix it around and uh, it'll make it smell really good. I, I added like three drops and it smells pretty good, but you can adjust it based on your essential oil. But that is how you make a olive oil lamp. Also, one thing I forgot to mention about uh, olive oil lamps is that they're really safe um, because olive oil itself is not flammable on its own. Like if you took a match to a container of olive oil just sitting out, it's not going to burn. And also, if you would, were to knock this over, because the oil is not, itself is not flammable, um, it would go out on its own. Um, I have not officially tested, that's what I've read, but um, if you test it, please post a video in response. But um, olive oil itself is not flammable, it's not like a petroleum-based oil or anything like that that you could just lay out on a countertop and just lay it on fire. Olive oil is not that flammable. So, but obviously it is flammable a little bit because it is uh, soaking up with our wick here in, in the lighting, but uh, it's, it's cool. It's really cheap to make uh, an olive oil lamp. 